Previously on Magnum Opus. Hold it right there, stranger. Why don't you tell me what you're doing here? I'm here to help you. You actually sound like... like you mean that. Oh, uh, I'll be. D did that... did the Ron actually send you? The Mr. Slick himself. Our Brahmin, Nessie, got out of her pen last night and... and, and wandered off. Mom said Nessie wandered out to her pasture by that place with the creepy robot. But you're not going to find her there. Franklin the Martian took her. Interloper. Who are you supposed to be? I am proud citizen and soldier of Mars. And my name is Franklin. I have something for you. What's this? You have an offering for me, Katie? She's leaving? So, Katie couldn't come out here herself. And that's why she sent you. For Nessie, the smelly thing is all yours. Do you want to set up a permanent shop? I know the perfect place. A permanent place sounds amazing. Franklin! Hi, Katie. Hello. Katie's parents. You're Franklin? From Mars? We're all packed up and ready. Are you all set? I'm ready to go. So where are we heading? Look, just tell me what you want. Are you lost or something? I'm here to help you. But who? Wait a minute. Ron, how about that? I figured he'd just taken my money and ran. I have a sister, Audra. She's a good girl, but gullible, you know? She's fallen in with a raider gang, common rad trash led by a guy named Knox. They've been filling her head with chems and God knows what other kind of ideas. I've tracked them to the Harbor Master Hotel. Come with me, help me get my sister back. Anton? What the hell are you doing here? Putting what's left of my family back together. Back away from my sister! Listen, please. I know what he must have told you, but Audra, she's not a junkie. She's strung out! Just look at her! If there was a way to make Audra better that didn't involve going to chemi care, believe me, I'd do whatever it took to give her that. But the jet is our only option. Please. Don't take that away from her i believe you even if you didn't come here to do the right thing i did oh, paying off. anton oh no he's dead isn't he and i know you did what you had to do for what it's worth it was the right thing to do would you be interested in coming to work for me you know what yeah I think I would. I come from a settlement called Sanford. You ever heard of it? It's a nice place. And where I met this young woman. One thing led to another and... Uh... Do you have a daughter? Yeah, that's right. I had a little girl. You must be the ones with the Asim sensors, eh? Uh, me and my partner here, yeah. We'll take 100 Asims, please. I'm not even sure we should be handing these things out anymore. If you're concerned about giving sensors out to strangers, why not have them join us instead? We'd be happy to join with you. I'll get you up and running. Really? You'd have us? Oh, geez, thanks. Okay, let's do this. Oh, you really don't know what this means to us. Here, I'll mark where we're staying on your Pip-Boy. I'll run ahead and tell the others. Meet you there, eh? I'll tag along with the youngin. I'm fairly familiar with sensors by now. Hey guys, Lively here. Welcome back to our Magnum Opus version 7 run. It's a mod list I make that's available exclusively on Wabajack. Uh, apologies, straight off the bat. Um, just because this has obviously taken me a while, I've been extremely absorbed into the new Stardew Valley update and some Helldivers 2 as well, so I haven't been playing a lot of Fallout 4. But I got the itch again, so I'm back. And um, we are obviously here with old Paul, following Hubert to meet with his buddies. And this will be probably the last big uh, tutorial quest for some settlements for quite a while. Because this quest will teach us how to use city plans and how to assign mayors and what that all means. So after this, we'll kind of really get into the meat of the, the storyline here, which is pretty nice. But fair warning, this is a good bit of dialogue here. So if you're not into that sort of thing, then you might want to skip ahead a bit. If not... 
you'll learn some uh, some good features. You'll learn about some new characters. Why do you have a gamut gun? <laughs> you guys should uh quit throwing cars at each other. It's not safe. Watch out for that car, Paul. Looks like it's gonna blow. All right, so it's not too much further here. It's just a little bit over the hill that way. Rumor has it there's a group of gunners and raiders that work together. They even have a secret password. It's Gary. I have no idea what you're talking about, Hunter. Oh, one other mod worth mentioning here is um, we use a new Robco Patcher that makes rad stags friendly. Which apparently Hubert doesn't really care about. But you can see my followers are not attacking rad stags. In vanilla, they'd be going crazy and trying to destroy them. Because technically rad stags are enemies, but their fear is set to 100. So they enter combat with you and instantly start running away. But now, they still run away, obviously, but they're not in combat, so my companions don't freak out and start shooting wildly, which is quite nice. I'm not sure what Hubert's problem is, but let's just get going. I know where he's going, so we can just go meet him there. I will say right off the bat, though, one thing you'll notice is we're about to meet this ghoul fellow up here, and his face texture is not really going to match his head very well. Uh, you'll see them on a couple of ghouls. Uh, him and like Valerie Barstow and Vault 88 will have the same issue. But it's just another thing with like the face and body textures we use that don't really match very well, especially with the ghouls. Um, so, I mean... I'm able to ignore it, you can too, I'm not going to do anything about it, so we might as well just learn how to overlook it. See? Here they are now, I told ya. All our building problems are solved. You really are an idiot, Hubert. After I've dealt with this, remind me to explain the meaning of low profile to ya. Okay, that's far enough. Throw your weapon on the ground. Let's see those hands in the air. Who are you supposed to be? I'm the one with a gun telling you to put down your weapon. How is this hard to understand? Calm down. Let's talk this out. There's nothing to talk about. Hubert may have asked to join you, but he doesn't speak for all of us. And I don't for a second believe what he or this old man say about these ASM sensors. ASAMs. ASAM. Whatever. Look, I don't want to hurt you, but I don't trust your reasons for being here. So please, just hand over your weapon. But I want to help you guys. Sorry, I'm not buying it. Damn, let's try the uh, second charisma check. You don't want to lay into me. Whoa, okay, okay. Oh, nice. I'm sorry. I'm lowering my gun. All right? That's good, Stodge. See? No need to point guns at everyone. No one's here to hurt us. That's true. Hey. I'll listen, but I'm still not convinced these things are the answer to a new home. I want to help, but I don't like the secrecy. Who are you really? No offense, but I can't go blabbing to every busybody who pokes their nose into our business. Sorry. But I gotta consider our safety. Look, we're just people who have lost our home. And now we're trying to start over again. That's all. What would it take to convince you? Okay. 
Even if I did believe these ASAMs do everything I've been told, how do I know we could trust you? We just had our old home taken from us by goddamn mercenaries. Had to flee just so we wouldn't become indentured workers. So I can't say I'm thrilled with the idea of us running, only to be leashed by some new landlord making promises they can't keep. Even if these senses of yours work, I'd need to know we're not signing over our independence and freedom. I need to know you're on the level. Couldn't agree more. How can you protect you and yours if you don't know what you're facing? Exactly. Huh. You, uh, actually understand. Maybe I've had you all wrong. Maybe these ASAMs really are what you say. Okay. I'll go along with this whole censor thing. We'll join with you. You better not try and screw us over. Oh, great. Was Dodge on board? Everyone else will fall right in line. But I've one condition, and it's non-negotiable. We'll join with you and use your sensors. But you've got to let us decide how we use them. If we're going to make a new home, then we should have the say in how it's built. Fair enough. All right. Well, then, uh, I think we can make this work. Okay, everyone, listen up. This is how we're gonna do things. We need to decide on a leader. Someone who can take charge of the building effort, and then run the place once construction's done. Most of us have skills that'd be useful in a leadership position. So anyone who thinks they're up to the task, step forward and make yourself known. I'll go first. What the? I can't say I expected Hubert to step forward. But what are you doing, old man? You're not one of us. I've already benefited from the censors. If I can, I'd like to return some of the kindness shown to me and help you people out. I know I may not look like much, but I've been around a while. Reckon I could offer some useful guidance, at least until you're on your feet. Hmm. Fair enough. But all three of us can't lead. We'll have to pick just one of us. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't you decide who gets put in charge? I think you'd probably choose a good leader. All right, I'll do it. Well, that's all kinds of fantastic. I can't wait to see who you pick. All right, so we have to talk to each of these guys and figure out their likes and dislikes. But this is teaching you the concept of mayors and how some settlements leadership works. So every leader is going to have a major positive trait, a minor positive trait, and then one minor negative trait. And it doesn't make too much of a difference, just little stat buffs and debuffs here and there. So you can just pick whoever sounds cool, really. Uh, one thing I want to add, though, is if you play at this conversation a little differently, it is possible for him to go hostile. And he'll attack you, and you'll kill him, and I think the robot, too. But if you do that, then Teresa here steps forward instead and offers to take over as a mayor. And that is actually the only way to get her as a mayor in this little quest here is by killing him. So, fun facts. Anyway, let's learn about everybody. I have so much data on the world before the atom After Kiri shuts up. I fear I may have to delete some of it to store my new observations. You'll be fine. Anyway, let's start with Hubert. We met you first. Let's get to know you first. Hi. How's it going, eh? Got someone in mind for the job? Tell me about yourself. Oh boy, where to start? Well, I was born, then I was a baby for a while, then a whole bunch of stuff happened. And naturally, I ended up joining the Children of Adam. Nice guys, but a bit too serious. So I left them and went to walk about, and then I met Stodge. Saved me from a real big mole rat. Then eventually me, Stodge, and some others formed a settlement. Then we lost it. Then we came here. I think that's about everything. Okay. Say your piece. Oh, like, what would I do if I was in charge? Whew, that's a head-scratcher for sure. Well, suppose I could ask my old church friends to help out. You know, if we're ever in trouble or something. And I guess just... 
try and make the people happy. A smile can go a long way, you know? Just don't ask me to keep no town records or nothing. I ain't much for bookkeeping and stuff. Too many numbers, you know? I still haven't decided. Oh, okay then. Paul, what about you, buddy? <clears throat> Made your pick, have you? No. Tell me about yourself. I'm old Paul. What else is there to know? I suppose I could tell you how old I am, but honestly, I can't remember. Uh, I used to live up in uh, Diamond City. I owned a gun store up there. I made the best guns in the Commonwealth. You ever hear of the broken mask incident? It was one of my guns that took down that haywire synth. But after that, I didn't feel much like staying in town. So I took up the life of a scaver. And it suited me just fine. But old age has a way of creeping up on you. Slowing you down. So I suppose you could say uh, I'm retired now. Okay. Say your piece. You mean what would I do if I was in charge? Guns. Guns for everyone. Nothing says settlement safety like everyone carrying a loaded firearm. And I guess I could share some of my expertise from my days as a scaver. Show everyone the right way to strip down salvage and how to properly maintain things. Youngsters don't know how to care for stuff these days. I'll think about it and get back to you. Alrighty, take your time. Hey. hey. <clears throat> huh? You made up your mind? Last but not least. It would be nice to know more about you. What? Am I story time stodge now? What would you even want to know? How about that I'm a ghoul? Probably didn't notice that, did ya? I'm not one of those decrepit pre-war ones, though. Uh, although, uh, I am pretty old. Old enough to have been a gunner. Back when that title was still worth something. Eh, uh, but that was long ago. These days, I'm more concerned with keeping me and mine safe from anything the Commonwealth can throw at us. Which is a lot. Okay, say your piece. What, I gotta sell myself? Ah, uh, fine. If you put me in charge, you can expect things to be efficient and done right. I run a tight ship, and I don't take no crap. I put my focus on defense and making sure everyone pays their dues. And if people don't like it, they can suck it. That line right there is why I like Stodge. I'll have to think about it a bit more before I decide. Fine. So obviously you can pick whoever you want, and it doesn't really matter. Hubert's an idiot, so I don't go with him because he's stupid. Old Paul is a good choice, but I feel like that's bringing in an outsider to take over this crew, and I just agreed to let them run their own settlement, so that kind of feels like a backstabbing kind of move to me, so I usually go with Stodge here. He seems like a natural leader to me, and he's already kind of in charge of this group, so I like picking him. I've made my choice. Oh? Who'd you pick? How about you? Ah, uh, smart pick. You made the right choice. And I will send them to Sunshine Tidings, because it's right up the hill here. Okay, bye. Yay! But we can obviously walk with these guys if we so choose. They just go right over the hill that way. One thing to be cautious about, though, is this fella right over here. See, he's not too far from the road, over in a place we call Carhenge. I've only seen them aggro him once, but it was a really bad day when that happened, so I try to keep a wide berth. Make sure I don't pull him over, you know, because we probably could take him with all these people, and especially with Heather and her incredible minigun, but I'd just rather not do that at the moment. There are some gunners on this overpass as well. We might aggro them, we might not. Any more stamina. There's 
Anyway, since we got here first, might as well clear the area a bit. Because there are a couple uh, prior residents here. Aim for the head. I'm trying, Heather. I'm not very good at this. Yeah, I'm sure Kiri can handle it. Might as well take a nap for some free health here. Plus, it'll help them arrive a little faster. Move, Heather. Hey, everybody. All right, everyone. Pull those thumbs out and grab a hammer. Let's see if these ASAPs live up to all the hype. Shh. Did you hear that? So once settlers have a leader, they can start building on their own. They will start by scrapping everything in the settlement and begin building anew. You can always start later by selecting a city plan from the desk. So yes, let's start. So the way these city plans work is they typically have at least two layers or levels, uh, usually four. The first one is called uh, level zero or also known as the scrap profile where it reduces the settlement down to literally nothing. Uh, it'll just revert it back to a vanilla state, so anything you built here is going to get deleted. And then it starts working on level 1 straight after, which is setting up all these plots, getting them building, um, usually making it look like it's under construction, so it looks like they're starting to build, and then level 2 will be more advanced, and then level 3 will be like the ultimate city plan here. So this one obviously just skips to level 1, it builds it really quickly so we can finish the quest and then we can go talk to Mr. Stodge. This dialogue, though, always seems kind of busted to me. Sometimes he just won't respond, but I'm pretty sure King Gath introduced some sort of failsafe for it, so as soon as you walk away, it'll, like, skip his dialogue and finish his quest, but it's just kind of weird, but, yeah. Great. Hey. Well, would you look at that? The ASAMs worked exactly as you said. I, uh... I, uh, suppose I owe you an apology. So, uh... Sorry. I think you've given us the fresh start we needed. You can count on me to lead this place in your name. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. So I'm actually kind of glad that I got that dialogue, because the last couple times I did this, he, uh, he didn't talk to me. So I would just walk away and I'll finish the quest. But anyway, we saw Jake's private frequency pop up, so we'll just roll right in the next one. Alright, so we'll head back to Concord as soon as we talk to this fella. Hey there. Got any work? Can't buy booze without caps. Can't get caps without work. <laughs> so you see my dilemma. I've got a great place you could set up permanently. Interested? Great! I'll be there with beers on. Bells on. What I'm trying to say is 
I'll beer there or beer squared. Hilarious. Go to Sunshine Tidings. You can help out Stodge and those guys. What the fuck was that? Oh, hey. Eh, it's the wrong button. I've been playing too much Helldivers. I forgot the grenade key. It is quite violent. It's a problem with playing a bunch of games at once. Get the controls mixed up. I'm sure some of you know all about that. All right, well, I mean, we just walked this way, so we'll just travel back. I'm not exactly missing anything, you know. Upstairs, eh? Hey, buddy. Hi. Oh, hey. I hope things went more smooth for you than they have for me. You take care of them folks? They all set up with ASAMs now? Yeah, I took care of them. Ah, good to hear. After our meeting with the Gunners, I was a little spooked. I was thinking twice about this whole ASAM thing. Thanks for talking me around. Now, my turn to share some good news. I managed to get the comm hub running. Come over here, let me show you. It's downstairs, man. Oh, Heather's in your way, huh? Please don't just walk off the roof. I'll do it so you don't have to. How about that? I'm fine, thank you. He walks real slow, so just be patient. I was patching in a few more parts when suddenly the darn thing just sprung to life. I guess I bypassed enough busted components. I knew you had it in you. We're not out of the woods just yet, but we are close. Now that the comm hub is actually running, I know the exact parts we need to get it fully repaired. If I could get this baby firing all cylinders again, it'll be perfect for what you'll be needing. I'm listening. With the hub fully functional, we could finally establish reliable communications between every single one of our settlements. Think about it. Near instant communication. Every settlement part of a networked interchange. If we had something like that, surprise attacks would be a thing of the past. Not even the gunners would be a worry no more. Plus, we'd have efficient division of labor, meaning faster settlement growth. How can I help? I'm glad you asked. We're not quite at the settlement interchange stage just yet. First, we're gonna need some specialized components to fully repair this thing. That's where I'm gonna need your help. That is, if you're willing to do a little legwork. Sure. I'm game. Now that's the spirit I love to see. Here, I've already written a list. These locations are where we should be able to find the components we need. However, this ain't gonna be the kind of stuff you'll be able to grab yourself. The parts will need to be stripped out of the tech they're housed in. But don't worry, I got the solution. Mala! Get over here! I believe you're familiar with our robot friend. Figured it was past time she had a name. So, Mala's probably upstairs. She also walks real slow, so this could take a while. The easiest way is to just wait. Mala here could take care of stripping out the components and deliver them back to me. And some of the Concord residents have volunteered to help as well. What you need to do is clear out a potential salvage site, scan it with an ASAM, and leave behind a locator beacon. Sure, I can do that. Well, ain't you just a ray of sunshine? I've adapted Mala's transceiver unit so she can pick up and follow the beacon's signals. That way, the robot can get to and from the salvage site without wandering off and getting lost. Sounds good. I've started building some locator beacons we can use for the job. Now, I know they look a bit on the heavy side, and they are, 
But keep in mind, my first prototypes was twice as big, and three times as heavy. Sounds like a piece of cake. <laughs> Maybe for you, but the rest of us ain't blessed with such sturdy frames. All right. Yay. Here's the first finished beacon. If you're a little way down, you can always unload some excess gear. I've updated your pit boy with the locations. It's up to you where you pick. You just need to clear out the area, scan it, place down the beacon at the marked coordinates, then head on back for the next beacon. Happy trails, and good luck. Thanks, buddy. Ooh, looks gross out here. So this is the last quest for Sim Settlements 2 Chapter 1. Uh, I'm going to make a quick stop, do some inventory management. But I was thinking... Um, anyway, I was thinking, because there's, uh, there's like six or seven different places you can go for this. And like this one here, there's one down in the glowing sea, one way out here, and yeah, there's quite a few. But I was thinking we could head down this way toward the glowing sea and kind of knock out finding Virgil at the same time. So we could advance some settlements to and the main quest at the same time. Like I said, I gotta chop some stuff off first. Well, we can also build city plans here now. Some of these early settlements are locked from city plans so they don't interfere with different quests. Uh, but that's what we got a couple of pop-ups there for at the end of that last quest. So... I never cleaned this place. That's why my hockey's not working. It makes sense. Anyway, let's see if I can even build a desk. Nope. Let's see if I can build a generator. Yep. And how about a beacon? No. Copper, ceramic, and rubber. Ooh, we'll get rubber at least. Uh, copper and ceramic? I don't know if there's anything around here I can get that from. Well, I got the copper. Ceramic, I feel like I'm more likely to get inside from like a plate or something. What you doing here? You are so dead. You think raiders would run when they see us coming? You guys got any ceramic? Glass. Oh, nice. There's no mesh in that. Because he got dismembered. Anyway. Trying to find some ceramic here, guys, before I was so rudely interrupted. Oh, of course, it was a crystal ashtray and not a ceramic one. I almost had my hopes up for a second there. Almost. Wow, I'm really not going to get it. Um, Heather might have some junk on her. Hey. Hmm? You have any ceramic, sweetie? Wow, she really doesn't. Unreal. I'll take it all just to be sure, but I didn't see it. Damn, no ceramic. This is the worst day of my life. Well, alright, I guess we're not putting a CD plane here just yet. So we can't, because I don't have enough stuff. 
We'll definitely do it later, though. There is one other thing I wanted to do down here, though, so let me just knock that out. But I just want to get some lights down here, because it's pretty dark down here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Horrible. That's better. All right. Let's dump all our stuff. I really need that flare gun, but not quite yet. Nope. I want that. See about making some 556, which I'm sure I need to scrap some stuff. So any gunpowder. And I have a lot of 45. I should be able to make another steam pack soon. Unfortunate. So I'm out of aluminum. But that's alright. Let me set up my weapon hotkeys. So, two. Let's do three on Uzi. Four on shotgun. Five on the rifle. Six on this. Seven. We'll ditch the other ones. I'm trying to get my weight down a little bit. Because this armor is real heavy. Hey. Come on, I know you have other stuff that we don't want to carry. Thanks. Hey. hey. Cool, that'll do. Um, that's really all I wanted to do down here. So, yeah, let's just get going. Okay, there's one more stop I want to make before we head down to the Glowing Sea. And I just want to swing by Starlight Drive-In really quickly. But on the way, actually, we can talk to some people in Concord. Because as some settlements progresses, they actually start building up Concord and new people start moving in, which is really awesome. And a lot of those guys have little quests for you. Like this fella standing out here. Hello. Hey there. Hey, how's it going? Seen you around town before. I don't suppose you'd be interested in checking out the mostly open new and improved Fallon's department store, would you? I'd be extremely interested. What's going on here? Well, me and this doll, Carnal, she's inside, ended up run out of our last town and found this place totally up for the grabs. And me, oh, I know a good deal when I see one. So I turn to Carnal and I say, Hey, baby, why don't we set up here, just you and me, see what we can get going on. And she said, you're going to love this. Sure, but don't call me baby. God, I love that woman. Best friend I've ever had. So, you interested in looking around? That does sound interesting. Doesn't it? Told Carnal someone would stop by eventually. All right. Well, if you'll just follow me inside. That was a nice little hop off your box there, buddy. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Bye. Carnal, stay inside after small humans scream at Carnal. <clears throat> hey. All right, here we are. Uh, be careful not to trip over all the uh, dust. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be frank with you. Ain't much going on here just yet. 
But once we get this place going, oh boy, it'll be just like home, no problem. What are you thinking about? Well, I've always had a passion for fashion. I read about it in a magazine once. But the issue is, I ain't exactly what you'd call the creative type. But with a little bit of help, I think we can get a solution going for that. Let me get Carnal down here and we can get into it. Hey, Carnal! We got somebody interested in our biz! And bring the camera! Just a moment, I'm refreshing! She'll be down quick. Uh, why don't you uh, take a seat? Or maybe look around? We don't got anything really worth stealing, unless you're interested in old coffee cups and clipboards. I, uh, I didn't mean it like that, but you know what? It's fine, I guess. Dylan called? Hey, sugar. Found someone willing to help us. Ain't that right? You're a super mutant? Yes. That bad? No, not at all. Yeah, I'm here to help. What's the problem? Okay, job's real simple. All we need is a few pictures of nice-looking outfits. For references, you know? Got this camera from the back. Should still work. How about a shot of that Jake fella lives over in the hardware store? Handsome devil he is. Hell of a style, too. Should be a great place to start. Uh, try not to let him spot you. Why all the secrecy? I just don't want the guy getting the wrong idea, you know? Uh, like, don't get me wrong, he's a good-looking fella. And if I had the time, I'd love to chat with him, but I got a shop to set up. Maybe after, though. Yes, after. Aw, oh, don't be jealous, babe. You'll always be my number one. Oh, you. Carnal do this right? What if I get caught? Nah, it's not like a real issue. If you do, just don't know how the guy will take it. If he's cool with it, then it's whatever. But if he's not, then just, uh... Maybe you leave my name out? This seem like trick. Is it? Shit, I guess it kind of is, huh? Now don't worry, babe. It'll be fine. When have I ever led you wrong? Hmm. Can't be too hard. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Thanks, you're a real doll. If you want, you can always stick around a bit after this. Take a look around the mostly a shop. Do da loo. Now that is a sight to behold. So graceful. But anyway, we got a camera. Which we'll put on eight. Looking for a new getup? Stop on by. Alright, let's go take Jake's picture. What? In a moment, we gotta talk to these guys. Excuse me. Oh, dang it to hell! You bagged a freaking Concord Deathclaw! This is unfreaking believable! Everyone from DC to Miami knows of this beast, and you done killed it! I demand to know how in Adam's name did you pull this off? I did. With nothing more than a pistol and three bullets. Oh, Daddy. This hunter beat you fair and square. There's no need to get all ornery about it. And where are our manners? I'm dreadfully sorry. This here tired old hunter is my father, Elias Thompson. And I'm Ruby Thompson. We've kind of set up shop here in Concord. I'm not sorry! Tying that damnable Death Claw's head on my mantelpiece was going to be my crowning trophy! Daddy, I think we should invite them home so we can hear the story in more comfortable surrounds. Uh, uh, all right, fine. Our house is the two-story on the outskirts of town near the old church. Still want to know how in Adam's name you managed it. We would love you to come and share a meal with us whenever you can. <laughs> no worries. No rush. Stop by some evening when you're free. Good company is always appreciated. Come on, Dad. Let's go and finish patching up the window like you promised. Bye for now. See you later. There's quite a few of these guys around that have little side quests. It's pretty cool. Uh, except for that door. It is from a different mod. But we'll get to that. So, um, I think it's that one with the, like, the white banisters. Oh, never mind. He's over here. Hello. Hey there. You must be that vaulter everyone's been jamming about. The name's Caleb. Saunders. I'm working on a case at the moment. And I could use a heavy hitter like you. 
Stop by my house if you get a chance. See you around. But anyway, uh, I wanted to go to Starlight. We'll catch up with those guys later. And I figure I'll just, uh, I'll take Jake's picture on the way back. Because I kind of forgot. <laughs> until just now. Well, speaking of needing stamina, I think it's about time we leveled up. Give ourselves some endurance. Just a quick little stat dump. While we're here... Pop me down to desk. Get in my armor. Squeaky, squeaky. Manage city. Let's assign a city leader. Um. Let's go with so many choices. It's weird that Codsworth is in here twice. Um, let's go with somebody I know but don't care about. I love that I can put dog meat in George. Let's do that. <laughs> that should... Oh, um, so speaking of uh, the traits that we have, you can see there's uh, traits give needs reduced by 25% on food, uh, pets are more likely to move into the settlement, and food requirements are increased. So, oh, oh, there's more among those. Uh, collect junk every day. Uh, oh, well. Okay. Anyway, yeah, make leader. Uh, you can tell that one's from an SS2 add-on, because the regular SS2 ones only have two positive and one negative trait. So. Alright, let's pick a plan. Uh, let's see, we have ROTC, that's Rise of the Commonwealth. Those are usually really big and complex plans. There's uh, the Performance Plan. Those are obviously for like performance, they're kind of smaller and more streamlined. Uh, Starlight Hive, that's kind of a weird one. I built that once, it was kind of weird. Basics is a really low level plan, so I'm going to pick the biggest one that I can, which is pretty much always going to be Rise of the Commonwealth. So, yes. You'll see all of our plots are going to get deleted. Because like I said, we have to go back to our scrap profile, or level zero, which is just restoring it to a vanilla state. So you can see the only thing that won't get deleted are those telephone poles. But that is to prevent power grid corruption. So SS2 is never going to delete telephone poles. But we can delete them manually. Just make sure that no wires are attached to them when you do it. Let's head up here. Give ourselves a nice little view. I don't know who's yelling so much. Kind of hard to see around my giant bulky armor, but whatever. But apparently Caleb has finally made his way home. Anyway, these guys will take care of all this. So they'll build up over time. So we'll just come back and check up on them later. For now, let's head as far south as we can and make our way down to the glowing sea. Looks like that's kind of a pain in the ass spot to fast travel to. 
So we'll go to Boston Dam. Um, south. We need that south. Oh, hello. I still had my camera equipped. That was some of the worst shooting of my life. I feel like goals are just really hard to hit in the head. Which I guess is kind of the point. I'm always bobbing and weaving. Anyway, I want to head south. So it doesn't matter which of these objectives we clear for Jake, we just have to do three of them all together. So you have many more options than what you actually have to do. Some are obviously more difficult than others. Those training plots will be extremely important later when we get uh, further into chapter 2, but we'll cover that when we get there. This area is for a quest in Diamond City. Yay! So we'll just kind of bypass it for now, since we'll be here later. I should have crossed that bridge earlier. I think we're... Yeah, we're pretty close. We gotta get across somehow. Alright. So... One of the downsides of being in power armor is we obviously cannot swim. So we'll just walk across the bottom of the riverbed here. It is where it is. Aw, oh, yeah. Alright, so where are we? Is this the, um... The hobbyist place, I think? Electrical whatever? Yeah! Electrical hobbyist club. Master! Oh jeez. take everything because why not so this place is littered with traps gotta be pretty careful it's also extremely radioactive but since I'm in power we won't really notice that Oh, well, I missed my arm up. This room in particular we have to be extremely careful, mainly because of that rocket launcher there. Which you can see is triggered by this tripwire. 
So if you run into that wire and set off that rocket, you're pretty much screwed. It's also this one that activates when you turn on the terminal. Good lord. Oh god, finally. That took a lot. But we're not quite out of the woods just yet. The, the Juggernaut? Hitting an enemy with Pain Train restores 20 action points and increases speed by 10% for 10 seconds. That's pretty cool. I don't have Pain Train. So that's, uh, that's a pretty high level perk. But good to know for later, that's pretty awesome. I think that's everything. Oh, we have holo tapes. Coral, it's me. I know you're in there, so just open up. The boys saw you up here yesterday. Look, they ain't gonna wait, and I ain't gonna wait. We leave in the morning, so just finish playing Hermit and have your ass at camp by sunup. So this thing, all you do is drop it, it's gonna scan the area, and that's it. Then we can just return to Jake. Quest complete. What in the hell's wrong with you? You don't get to vanish like this. I don't care how many booby traps you hide behind, Coral. We're still here. He's your kid, not mine. So you'd better get your shit together and come find us when you're done with this idiocy. And one more. Maybe you figured out something a long time ago, and I'm just learning it now. Just wasn't fair, Coral. Not for this kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure thing, kiddo. I'm hungry, too. And there's nothing for us here. Let's go. So obviously we can come in and shut it down. We already killed it, so it doesn't really matter. Same with the turrets. We already killed that, too. But that's it. We can leave. Oh, can I? No. Be okay. able to pick this. I feel like there's a key for that door, and I just skipped it or something. But it's whatever. All right. So with that, we can just fast travel back here later to uh, continue our journey south. But for now, let's head on back to Jake. Oh, we can get our picture. Almost forgot. Cheese! I cleared out that spot you sent me to and set up a radio beacon there. Great work! Malice set off as soon as you activated the beacon. By now, she should already be stripping the place down. Huh. You know, after we're done getting what we need for the hub, no reason we couldn't keep sending Mala out, gather other useful materials. But let's worry about that later. For now, you ready for the next locator beacon? Boy, howdy, I sure am. I'm ready. Great. Here's the second beacon. Good luck. Okay. Well, while we're here, it appears to be nighttime, so we can meet with those other guys we uh, talked to earlier. The hunters. Uh, I think they're in this house right here. Oh, the text is red. Oh, it says I'm currently trespassing. Excuse me. Hello again. Why? Hi. I must have come too late or too early. Does it have a time listed? Is it miscellaneous? No, it just says join, but doesn't say a time. Hey. Um. Okay. Um. That's so weird. Is it because I'm in power armor and I'm supposed to sit down for this maybe? I mean, I know I'm supposed to sit down, but. Excuse me. No, you're Hi. just gonna keep getting up and sitting down over and over. Oh man, that's weird. Okay. Well. Let me just get my things and I'll leave you guys alone, I'm sorry. And that flag my armor is stolen. Relaxed, you will surely be quite strong. 
Yeah, thanks. Alright, well that was super weird, so we'll just try again later. I'm guessing they just can't go hostile, because I feel like they would have. That was, I was in there a long time. But uh, we'll try and meet up with Caleb instead, I guess. Probably easier out of power armor though. These houses are kind of small. No, no. Let's see what we have here. Hopefully, something we can use this time. Huh. This is good timing. Not exactly what I had in mind to show you, but it'll do. You might be wondering about the dead body here decorating the floor. This. Poor slob had information on him about a certain individual that I would very much like to see dead. He, uh, resisted my initial questions, but I was able to extract what I needed eventually. His death was an unfortunate side effect of the process, but I doubt he'll be missed. The man I'm after is known as Bombface. He was a one-time Morovsky associate whose paw prints are all over the serious crime around these parts. He killed my wife, and does not hesitate to kill anyone else who crosses him. It's taken me months to get this far, and finally I have a lead on the bastard. Question is, will you help me with the next piece of the puzzle? If it means protecting innocent people from a madman, yes. Wonderful. Mr. Useful here gave me the name and location of one of Bombface's organizers. Give me a few hours to clean this up, and we'll work out how to track this goon down. Okie dokie. Okay, back to work. Next, let's go find Virgil. So, back to the club we just Got left. Alright, so I need to go south. Now, the glowing sea is no joke. There's a lot of things that make this place a lot harder than vanilla, because in vanilla it's kind of underwhelming, because they build it up to be this, like, uh, immensely deadly radioactive wasteland. And then, when you go down, you get, like, one rat a second, and... It, like, you get more rads from swimming, really. But, uh, in this list, you get, like, ten times rad damage. Every creature that spawns there should be a glowing variant. And there's gonna be some new creatures that I'm not gonna spoil. But if we run into them, we'll talk about them some more. And I imagine we will, because we'll probably be down there for a little while. Might as well get this on my map. It's right here. Cuties. Oh, this this may have been a mistake. Or not. That was ridiculous. I also keep accidentally using stim packs when I'm trying to switch weapons because I'm so used to hellbounds. Oh well, it is what it is. I have plenty. So I didn't check my service rifle at the uh, at the weapons bench, but I should have because I really hope it's burst fire. I'm too lazy to open my menu and check right now, so we'll find out the hard way, I guess. But welcome to the glowing sea. We'll get, a, we'll get this tunnel entrance real quick. I don't actually want to be here; just want to unlock the gate. But, okay, now we can head into the Glowing Sea proper, which is south and west. And by that, I mean we will be doing it on the next episode of our Magnum Opus run, because we are running a little long, and I think this will be better as kind of its own separate episode where we traipse along into the Glowing Sea and see what trouble we can get into. 
So as always, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, again, I'm sorry it took so long to get this out. I've been so busy with farming and being useless and killing bugs. So thank you to all my patrons. Thank you to all my supporters, everybody in Discord. I love all you guys, and I'm very grateful to have so many friends in this community. So I will see you all next time, and you guys have a good one.